When I was 12 years old, I had a, 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 an accident. I was riding a mini bike, which my dad objected to wholeheartedly. I used to do a paper route, and I tore my ACL and my medial meniscus. Back then, they didn't know how to treat them. They didn't reconstruct them. Uh, but I'll never forget, my dad was military, so I was taken to a military hospital. And it was such an impression on me when uh, they call in, who was, at that time I found out was the orthopedic surgeon, who comes in and he's in his Navy uniform, officer, tall guy, and he comes in and he examined me and he says, you know, you, you have this injury, we're going to have to do surgery on you. And they did. And for the, at the age of 12, uh, I had my first exposure to surgery. So uh, it left a, a, an impression on me, and it's funny because people tell me, since when did you want to be an orthopedic surgeon? I said, since I was age 12. So I kind of had my head set on it, and this is what I wanted, so here I am. I think that I always had the advantage of being a patient, and uh, I think I talk too much to my patients, which makes me always run a little delayed, and sometimes they get angry because they got to wait, but once I think I'm done with them, they understand because I give them all the time they need. And I think that comes from have been going to surgery already three times in my life. The two times, the first two times, obviously I wasn't a physician, so I had no idea. The last third time, I was already an orthopedic surgeon, and when I was going in, I realized all the thoughts that came through my mind, all the questions I had, which I really had the answer to them, but I still had these questions and these fears and these concerns. It's very important to, to educate and instruct the patient of what's going on with them, what's happening. I like to show them their MRIs, their X-rays, and explain it to them so they understand. I think if they understand, then they can participate in their care. So uh, I, was, I think I have an advantage in that sense of had been under the care of an orthopedic surgeon for so many times. Um, I like to pride myself like when I give an injection because the size of the needle counts and I use a very small needle because that's what they used to use on me and I know there's a difference to that. So there's details that I think help in that sense. In the field of medicine in general we're taking care of disease, uh, we're taking care of something that eventually always wins the battle. Uh, but I think in orthopedics we're able to fight very strongly back on the disease point of view. You have somebody who has a very arthritic joint, we can replace it and we can give them back their quality of life. Um, if they broke a bone, we can fix it, mend it, and give them back their quality of life. And um, for the same reason, I think in the, in the world of research, they're, they're advancing so much. Um, we're beginning to insert cartilage from other tissues, um, from the same person. We can harvest them and insert them in them. So I think it'll come to a day where we'll be so advanced that maybe the replacements will be an old thing. We'll look back and say, oh my God, in the 2000s and in the 90s, they used to do these horrible things. Nowadays, we just give them this special treatment and they have a new joint. Um, I think it'll come to that day. It's probably some time away, but um, the research is certainly in improving. We're working on robotics. So robotics are helping us replace joints to a more precise than what we would do with the naked eye. Um, we're harvesting the cells, as I said, the cartilage cells from the same patient. We send them, they grow them in a lab, and then we can give them back to the patient. So there's a lot of research going on, a lot of technology that's advancing. We're doing a lot of things through smaller incisions. Uh, there used to be, a, when I was in training way back in the 90s, um, they used to have a saying that was, you know, if you have to make a hole, you make a hole. If you had to expose, big incisions. Well, that's not no more. Now you hear a lot of the word is minimal incision, minimally invasive, and we're able to do that. And it's all due to the technology that's advanced leaps and bounds. My best compliment is when I have a patient that came referred by another patient, that's my day. I'm happy.